In this video, we're going to take a look at using transformations to graph quadratic functions. Remember that the parent quadratic function is f of x is equal to, oops, is equal to x squared. And that's a parabola with the vertex at 0, 0. And then the next point would be 1, 1, or negative 1, 1 and then 2, 4, and so on to get us our parabola. So here's the parent function of quadratic functions. Something like, like that. Okay. Now, each of the ones that we're going to take a look at are a variation of that. And one way to figure out exactly what variation it is is to use the vertex form of quadratic functions which is right over here and vertex form we have a sitting out front here that tells us if it's a uh, vertical um, stretch or compression and also if it's a reflection over the x-axis well how can it do those two things you say well if it's negative it's going to be flipped over the x-axis so if we have a parabola and this is a positive number in front of the x here then it's going to be opening upward if it's flipped down it's going to be a negative number sitting here and that means it's going to be flipped down so let me just jot that here so if it's opening down it's a negative if it's opening up it's a positive then inside here it says minus h that's the horizontal translation so from this the parent function here, the vertex is at 0, 0. That minus h gets that change. So if it's moved over to the right, say 3, then it will be x minus 3. If it's over to the left, say 4, then it will be x plus 4. Sometimes that's a little bit confusing, but remember, if we want to represent that move to the left, that would be a negative number. So when we put in a negative number, it's minus a negative, say minus 3, that is the same as plus 3. So that's where that happens. Then finally, k is our vertical translation. So if it's, say, plus 1, we're moving up 1. If it's minus 5, we're moving down 5. So using that vertex form, we can take a look at some, some um, quadratic functions and then that can help us to graph them. All right, so let's do that. Let me switch colors here so that we can tell what we're doing. And this first one, as I look at it and compare it to my vertex form, well, we have x plus 3 squared. So that's kind of like this part here. And then there's nothing else. So let me just rewrite it and in vertex form just to see how all those pieces fit together. So x plus 3 squared and then plus 0. That would be the same thing because there's nothing here. I can represent nothing with 0. So I have g of x is equal to this. Now, there's nothing in front of there. So that means it's going to be opening upward. Then I look here and my h, it's plus 3. So plus 3 my h then must be negative 3 because remember n minus a negative gives us the plus so my vertex is going to be at negative 3 0 and that's one thing that I, I neglected to be real clear on over here remember in vertex form the vertex is going to be at the point h k so if we can track down that vertex that can help us a lot as we start graphing these quadratic functions. So in this one, my vertex is at negative 3, 0. Okay, so let's just graph that point. 1, 2, 3, and then up and down 0. So right there is my first point. Then I know that this is the vertex, so I want to pick points that are close to it in order to graph my function. Well, let's pick one right over here. What's this point? That would be negative 2, so let's put it in. So if I put in negative 2 for x, I would have negative 2 plus 3. Squaring that gives us 
negative 2 plus 3 is 1, 1 squared would just be 1, so I'm right over here at 1. If I go one more over, then I would be at negative 1, so if I put that in, negative 1 plus 3 squared, well negative 1 plus 3 would be 2, 2 squared is 4, so at negative 1, I'm up here at 4. Okay, now, remember that parabolas are symmetric. So if I have my vertex here, I know that if there's a point here, there's also a point on the opposite side of the vertex, that same distance. So notice how here's the middle, the axis of symmetry we call that. I have a point that's one over this way. So that means from the axis of symmetry, I must have a point that's one over this way. Same if I go up here, if I go two over, staying on that same level, I get another point. So now I have five points that I can use to graph my parabola. So there we go. So that is the function g of x equals x plus 3 and squared. Now, let's take a look at this next one. I'm going to switch colors again so we can keep track of what we're doing. All right. So this one looks more in that vertex form that we um, looked at earlier and I can just pick those pieces out of there so my vertex is going to be at HK so my H is 3 remember the form is minus H so this is a positive 3 there so 3 and then plus K the K would be 2 so that means my vertex is at 3 2 well let's start by graphing that over 3 up to there's my first point then from there it would be wise again to pick some points on that are close by that so let's go let's go back toward the origin this time and let's put in the point 2 for x or the the value 2 for x so if I put that in it would be 2 minus 3 oops goofed up there let's get rid of that 2 minus 3 squared plus 2 okay 2 minus 3 is negative 1 negative 1 squared would be 1 plus 2 would be 3 so that point would be at 1 or excuse me 2 3 so right there then let's come one closer here let's put in 1 for x so we have 1 minus 3 squared plus 2 so 1 minus 3 is negative 2 so negative 2 squared would give me 4 plus 2 is 6 so I'm at the point 1 and 6 here's 4 there's 6 now again remember that we can use that fact that parabolas are symmetrical to find a couple more points and then graph my parabola so I've got this point right here it's one over from my axis of symmetry and the vertex so if I go on this side there must be a point right there same thing if I go up here one more over there's another point now I've got five points sketch my graph and there we go there is the graph of that quadratic function also remember that value a right there that can represent that vertical stretch or uh, um, compression also it could be that reflection so let's just out of curiosity take a look at this one and I'm just gonna change it up just a tiny bit and make it like this I'm gonna say g of x is equal to negative x plus 3 oops plus 3 squared alright so I should probably fix that so it doesn't look like a crazy absolute value or something alright so how is that gonna change things well that negative value there means that my parabola is gonna open downward but otherwise it's gonna be the same so my vertex is still at the point 3 0 or excuse me negative 3 0 because remember the form is 
minus h, so minus a negative gets us that plus. There's no k over here, so that's zero. Then we put in some values. Well, I'm back here. That's my vertex. Then I put in, say, negative 2. So if I put in negative 2 for x, negative 2 plus 3 squared, negative 2 plus 3, oops, don't forget the negative out there, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, but then that negative out front, so I have to tack that on, so I'm at negative 1. So notice how I'm going down now instead of up. Then if I put in negative 1, got that negative out front, negative 1 plus 3, squared, negative 1 plus 3 would be 2, 2 squared is 4, and then negative equals negative 4. So we're over here at negative 4. One thing to be very careful about, remember the order of operations says that we need to do those exponents before we multiply. That negative sitting out front there, treat that just like a negative 1, remember? we need to multiply after we take care of the exponents. So do the exponent stuff, then we multiply. That's why sometimes people want to square that away. Well, we can't do that because of the order of operations. So again, I got those two points. I can get points on the opposite side of the axis of symmetry. Remember, because it's symmetrical. So then connect the dots, just like so. And there's my parabola. Remember, um, using transformations to graph quadratic functions, that parent function is the x squared, and then the vertex form right here, vertex just falls right out of there, hk. We can use that to help us know where to start to pick points. Then we can pick some points that are close by that vertex. Then use the fact that parabolas are symmetrical to find maybe one or two more points. And then we sketch our parabola and off we go. Also remember, if A is negative, it's going to be opening downward, or if it's positive, that parabola is opening upward. Hope this was helpful. Keep working hard on your math.